Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to another Out of This World compilation from our space. Wife cheated and wanted open marriage. Ten years later, she regrets it and wants me back, but I moved out. I, 47 male, married to Lissa, 42 female, for 17 years, though we lived as a couple for only about seven years. A decade back, I caught Lissa cheating on me and confessed that she had fallen out of love and wanted an open marriage. We have two kids. The elder was a toddler and the younger was still an infant when this happened. It was devastating for me. She said back-to-back -back pregnancy took a toll on her physical and mental well-being, so she wants to freshen up. Unfortunately, her way of relaxing was to bring different dicks to bed. Divorce was complicated at that point with two little kids and my meager income. I decided to let her get effed while I moved upstairs of our duplex house. We became co-parents of our child. It wasn't as hunky-dory as it sounds. We separated with a lot of bitterness and name-calling. Mostly it was from me, because she cheated. But eventually, we got caught up in the work and life, and I moved on and mellowed down. A few months back, I met Kathy, 35 female, at work. She's my junior at work. We vibed instantly. Bonding with her was the most natural thing to happen to me of late. It was no romantic relationship at the start. We hit off as understanding coworkers, happened to spend time beyond work, still as friends. It was only last month when we made out and I felt something special about her. Since then, she has been crashing at my place quite often, which is concerning my wife. Technically, Lissa is still my wife as we're still married. Lissa has gotten weird these days. Weird as in she is hanging around near me whenever Kathy and I are together. She commands authority like a wife. I had to remind her that we are separated and I get to do anything, just the way she has been doing it for years. It's hard to describe what she has been doing, but let me try. One day, Kathy and I were having dinner at my kitchen space. Lissa shows up and asks, Can I join you guys? It became a super awkward moment for both of us. Kathy and I looked at each other with astonished faces. Lissa sat down with her plate without even waiting for an answer. We had dinner sitting like strangers and smiling uninterested at Lissa's stupid and forced conversation. Our dinner was ruined, but I gave the benefit of the doubt to Lissa that she was just trying to fit in. Then... There was another instance where she acted bossy trying to impose her rights as a wife. Kathy and I were upstairs watching a movie. Lissa barged in and asked me to come with her. I asked what's the matter. And she was like, your kids need you. The younger one has a science project to complete and you need to help him. I was astonished because we had split the schoolwork for our kids. I get to assist the elder kid and she would do it for the younger one. I said I had already done my part for our elder son and this is on her. She got furious and yelled, is this kid not yours? Instead of helping him out, you are here lurking around. Such a dud. It led to a full-blown argument between Lissa and me. Kathy got awkward and excused herself and left. After that incident, Kathy told me she won't be hanging out at my place. Though we are meeting at hers, but the thing is, why would I compromise on my life when I have never raised a finger on hers? She has been leading her life the way she wanted, bringing any Tom, Dick, and Harry to the house, but I chose to look the other way. But when I have found someone to bond with, Lissa is acting like a witch and deliberately trying to break it. I confronted her last day and she said she wasn't bothered about my closeness with Kathy. She refused to acknowledge that she had been acting around. She says I was overthinking. I said if she continues to put her leg into my space, then I would think about getting divorced. Tears welled up in her eyes and she said she didn't mean to disturb us. She was just anxious about our son's unfinished project and she was busy with her work and that's why she asked for help. I said that wasn't a call for help, it was no less than gaslighting. She then called up Kathy and apologized and asked her to come over. Kathy accepted the apology, but she drew her boundaries and said she prefers meeting me at her place. I'm at a fix now. I want to get rid of Lissa now. I'm afraid that she would ruin my brooding relationship with Kathy. I'm thinking of getting a divorce now. The only reason why I didn't go for divorce back then was because I didn't want my children to choose between their mom and dad. Now I'm thinking whether I should get done with it and prioritize myself over everything else, even my children. Or should I wait a few more years for my children to grow up and then make a move? Not sure if Kathy would wait for me until then. Ah, I'm still angry with Lissa and her decision to open the marriage. I'm also angry at myself for agreeing with her and not pushing back enough. Ah, the joys of modern romance. Where not so ex-wives crash romantic dinners and school projects become battlegrounds for marital disputes. Apparently, your wife thinks open marriage means inviting a rotating cast of characters into the bedroom while you're trying to salvage what's left of your dignity upstairs. Ah, uh, Hopi, the eternal conundrum of why we don't cut ties sooner with those who bring chaos into our lives. It's like watching a slow motion disaster unfold, isn't it? 
Sometimes it's the fear of the unknown or the comfort of familiarity that keeps us stuck in the dysfunctional situations. And let's not forget the hefty price tag that comes with divorce attorneys. They're not exactly handing out free consultations. But hey, hindsight is 2020. Edit 1. Sorry for all the mumbo jumbo and missing information, particularly around Lissa's cheating and our separation dynamics. People are saying it's difficult to give any advice without his clarity. So here's everything. It's going to be long. You can skip this part if you aren't interested in knowing the history. This was like 10 years ago, so I might miss some details here and there. Four months after the birth of our younger son, Lissa started acting up. She didn't let me come close. She said she didn't feel ready for sex. Pregnancy and breastfeeding have made her averse to intimacy. I respect her decision, but she was also drifting apart emotionally. I suggest we seek couple therapy, but she shrugged it off, saying it was just her postpartum thing and would recover eventually. It was almost a year when I lost patience and confronted her that we need to address the elephant in the room. She either goes to therapy with me or tells me the truth what's wrong. She gaslighted the situation that I was being insensitive and all those crap, but I didn't let it slide this time and dug out the truth. I snooped on her phone but didn't find anything concrete. She had deleted most of the chats and emails. I don't remember exactly how I got the cue, but one day she said she was going out shopping with her friends. I followed her car and found her cheating. She was sleeping with a young college goer back then. I barged into the, his house. Okay, not barged, knocked. A shirtless guy answered while Alyssa was on the couch in her lingerie, trying to cover herself. I held that guy by his neck and was almost about to punch him when Lissa intervened and pleaded to leave him. She cried that it was not his fault. He is just one of the guys she's hooking up with. It blew my mind. What the hell? One of the guys? She confessed hooking up with a couple of guys. The guy standing in front of me had no idea what was happening or if she was married with kids. We came back home and I did all sorts of things which any man in my situation would do. No, not hitting. I'm a man of no violence. I called up her parents and revealed her truth in front of everyone. I insisted on a divorce. I even hired a lawyer and discussed the case. But as the situation progressed and the lawyer explained the reality, it shook me. There was no real gain for me except loss. As the children were tiny, they would need their mother. At most, I can get the joint custody which would be again at the mercy of Lissa to let me meet them and dictate the terms. Yeah. Of course I could knock the courtroom door if she doesn't comply with the court order, but how many times would a normal man want to get into this law and order thing? We live in a no-fault state, so no moral policing for her. I still have to pay alimony. Child support is anyway unavoidable. So basically, I take care of all the responsibilities as a dad, but I'm left at Lissa's mercy to spend time with my children. Lissa, on the other hand, was also against divorce. She suggested that instead of divorce, let's open our marriage and we can come back to each other whenever we want. I knew I never wanted her back, but divorce was unaffordable at the time. The only viable option was to separate and live as housemates and co-parent our children. So we did that. Though she chooses to call it open marriage or whatever the crap she wants, I consider this to be a dead plant and we are separated. In the last 10 years, Lissa has had many partners, though she claims nothing serious with any of them. I believe she had at least three partners who were more than just physical. They came home, she went hiking and on vacation with them. It was not easy for me to see her getting knocked up. First her cheating and then her multiple partners banging her in our bedroom. We have a duplex house. I took the guest bedroom upstairs. The stairs leading to it has a passage through the back door. We have bought that house from an Asian couple who constructed this house to have their grown-up son living with them upstairs with privacy. But sadly the son moved out and the couple sold it to us as it was too big for them. The main entrance of the house opens in a living room with a huge closed kitchen with dining space, a master bedroom and a storeroom which we made as our children's room. Upstairs, it was a guest room, the same size as the master bedroom and the remaining space had a huge library sort of structure for reading and for hosting parties. That space leads to the top of the house where there is a small terrace. Since I was put upstairs, I was able to see most of the things happening down. Sometimes I wished I could shut my eyes, but for my children's sake, I remained vigilant. At the start, I also jumped into dating sprees, but after a couple of months, I felt hollow and meaningless. I stopped it. Instead, I focused on more meaningful stuff. I joined a badminton club and worked on my athletic body. I was a sports enthusiast in college, so I went back to pursuing field games on weekends. I joined a hiking club that organizes solo hikes every two months. It's like you cannot take your friends, spouse, or anyone known. You go alone, and there would be a bunch of other people who are also alone. So basically, you hike with strangers. It was dang fun. I did that for two years continuously, and now I do it only twice a year. I've had hookups here and there in these last 10 years, but no emotional affairs and no long-term partners. Didn't feel that connection with anyone else. With Kathy, things are different. 
I feel unhappy around her. She's the woman I feel I can give love another chance. But the devil of my life has come hunting me down there as well. The current situation remains the same. Kathy refuses to come to my place. I'm worried that she would go distant from me and I don't want to lose her. The situation is practically choosing between Kathy and my children and I'm struggling to make a choice. Ah, uh, the saga continues, doesn't it? Thanks for filling in the details. It sounds like you've been through quite the roller coaster ride with Lissa, and navigating through the aftermath of her choices hasn't been a walk in the park either. It's understandable why a divorce might have seemed like a daunting option given the complexities involved, especially with young children in the picture. Your decision to separate and co-parent was probably the most practical one at the time, despite Lissa's attempts to redefine it as an open marriage. And it seems like you've been doing your best to move forward, focusing on your own well-being and interests. Ultimately, it's important to prioritize your own happiness and well-being, but of course, that's easier said than done when there are kids involved. But I don't know anyone who wants to be miserable for the rest of their lives. You deserve to find happiness and fulfillment in relationships, whatever form that may take. But you'd think at this point too, your children are aware of what their mother is doing and it would be just as awkward and painful to watch for them as it is for you. Update one. Hello all. Thanks for all the suggestions and comments. I appreciate all of it, good and bad, both. I sought therapy, which helped a lot in understanding my focal point and what I wanted at this point in my life. As you guys said, the children are entering their teens, so it's just a matter of a few years before they would walk out to lead their individual lives and it doesn't make sense to miss my chance of being happy with Kathy. I had a transparent discussion with Kathy. I told her about my feelings. I told her I want to be with her and if she feels likewise, I can work this out. She said she feels likewise but is reluctant because of my family dynamics. She just doesn't feel comfortable being around my legal wife. She's fine with the children around me. I said I can work this out. I'm going to move out. The children can decide where they want to stay. They are mature enough to make this decision. They can also choose to shuffle between moms and dads. Kathy voted in for it. My therapist suggested children counseling where they could be made aware of our marital status in an age appropriate manner. I told Lissa about the counseling thing and she flipped out. She said I was being selfish and nuts for dragging my children into this mess. That I'm messing with their life by getting serious with Kathy and I should prioritize my family over my own selfish desires. I lost my crap at this. Really Lissa? Are you the one giving these preachings of family and moral BS? What happened to your ethics when you were getting knocked up by different dicks while your children were still breastfeeding and rolling in their cribs? I asked her to back off and took the kids to the counselor. It was helpful. The children have received it well. They kind of appreciated that we were sticking along for so long for their sake. They also agreed that I have the right to be happy for the rest of my life. I told Lissa I would be filing for divorce. She acted shocked and started sobbing. She said, I thought we decided never to get divorced and be with each other throughout. Now when you found this woman, you were leaving your family to be with her? I have also met so many men who wanted to marry me, but I never traded off my married life for them. I said, stop trying to guilt trip me. This isn't helping. Cut the crap and sign the papers. I'll be paying for the children's education until college. You can keep the house and the car. That would be your alimony. I'll be moving out. I'm choosing my happiness over money because now I can afford it. Back then I couldn't. She cried and tried all means to talk me out of the divorce thing. She said I can move out and live with Kathy and remain married. I said I love Kathy and don't want her to be called my mistress. I know no one would call her out that way, but Lissa would. She can go any length to humiliate others. The paper should be in any day. I'm moving in with Kathy next month. I'm waiting for my children's annual exams to be over. I would be taking them for a trip and then I would move out. I would be relieved when all these things get settled for all. Lissa's reaction to your decision to pursue your own happiness is deeply unfair and troubling. Her attempt to guilt trip you by questioning your commitment to family while conveniently ignoring her own actions is not only manipulative, but also hypocritical. It's clear that you've put a lot of thought and consideration into your choices, especially regarding your children's well-being and happiness. You sought therapy and transparent discussions with Kathy, and even involved your children in counseling to ensure they understand the situation in an age-appropriate manner. No one should be made to feel guilty for choosing to prioritize their own emotional fulfillment and well-being, especially in a situation where staying in the marriage is no longer tenable. Lisa's got to nut up. Update 2 I tell you, this woman is a real witch. As I mentioned in my last update, I was off for a vacation with kids. This woman used the opportunity to pull off her evil plan. Lissa sobs her way to Kathy and asks her to back off. She told her that she's tearing apart her family and that our children would be suffering because of her. Lissa tried to guilt trip Kathy, but when Kathy didn't budge, Lissa said that I wasn't serious about her and Kathy was just a fling for me. Lissa is a shrewd and cruel woman. She knows very well how to play the hurt cards. 
She knew I was in a low network zone with kids, so Kathy wouldn't contact me. And she didn't. Had she been any other woman, she would go crazy at this fling statement, but Kathy remained composed and waited for my return. She had the hotel number I was put up in, but she didn't disturb me. That's what I love about her. She's a secure woman despite my complex situation. When I returned home and got to know about Lissa's malicious move, I stormed to her door and gave her the yellings of her life. Should have done this earlier to get the crap out of her head. Her entitlement behavior has crossed all limits and now no one is going to bear that. I have moved out of the house. My children have also decided to stay with me, but we don't have a spare room for them. So I'm looking out for a bigger house to accommodate my children. Until then, they are at their mom's. Lissa threw all kinds of tantrums when I was moving out. From guilt tripping to yellings, from gaslighting to sobbing and pleading, asking for another chance to be given to our relationship. I said our relationship was over 10 years ago. We were just housemates and co-parents. The reality is I have moved on from loving her. She's nothing to me. I love Kathy and want to spend the rest of my life with her. When the divorce papers reached Alyssa, she tore it away. My lawyer had to send her a notice threatening to sue her for damaging a legal document. Only then did she mellow down and agree to sign it. The divorce proceedings are on. I haven't checked upon my soon-to-be ex since then. I went to pick up my children twice, but didn't enter the house. And yeah, a lot of you asked about my children's age. They are 11 and 13 now. Quite mature to understand the divorce and separation. Update 3. So glad to announce the soon-to-be ex is now my official ex-wife. The highlight of this update is, the divorce is settled and my children have moved in with me, but they would be visiting their moms every two weeks or whenever they want to. The last month had been hectic, renting a house and moving stuff. We had not told Lissa about children moving in with me until I rented a new house. The children and I all were aware that she would break several hells on us, so best to avoid or delay it as much as possible. The children said that they would keep their bags packed and sneak out with me when Lissa wouldn't be around, but I decided to go in a legal way. Don't want to get into another trouble with that woman. As for our divorce clause, we have to give a three-day notice to each other if we want to take our children for more than two days. So I went home and told her that the children wanted to move in with me and I would be coming in three days to pick them up. As expected, she freaked out. Good for her that she didn't go violent, breaking things and all. It would have played better for us. But no, she chose the emotional way, hugged the kids and cried, saying sorry for everything and asking them not to abandon her. She tried her best to emotionally manipulate them to stay with her and she was even successful in doing that with the younger one. He said that he wants to stay with mama. Kathy had told me that situations like this could brew and I should be prepared for their last minute back out. So when he called, I said, cool, dad loves you no matter what, but the elder son still stood solid to his decision to move out. I said, sure, I'll pick you up. I don't know what happened in between, but when I went to pick him up, both boys were ready with their stuff. I hugged them both and shipped them away. I didn't ask them what happened here. It's already so traumatic for them. I don't want to scribble and torture them. Kathy and I are trying to make them comfortable at our house. We are involving them in setting up their room. Everything goes in there as per their taste. When the children were leaving the house, I was expecting Lisa to give her last try, but she had given up by then. She just sat there crying and sobbing. She hugged the boys tightly, told them how sorry she was about her behavior, and said she loves them and they were free to come back to mama's whenever they wanted. She asked me if I had a minute for a coffee. Her ask sounded naive and genuine, so I obliged. Her tone was remorseful. She apologized and this time it didn't sound fake. She said, I was delusional all this while, thinking you would never leave me. When Kathy came into your life, I didn't consider her to be a threat. I thought her to be one of those flings that would fizzle out in a month. I guess I took you for granted because of the security you provided to me and the children despite everything I did to you. I didn't realize I was mean and narcissistic and when I did, it's too late I guess. I just smiled and suppressed my emotions from flowing out. I stood up to leave. She came forward to hug me. I hugged her back. That was our first hug in 10 years. I can't contemplate how I felt about it, nor can I express how I feel now, after the last talk with her. I'm neither happy nor sad, just numb. That's what it is. The last six to seven months have been quite a life-changing phase for me. I guess I would take time to process everything, but thanks for all the support. You guys have been the best. I might update the thread if something progresses from here. Lissa's sudden realization of her actions and her attempts at apology might seem like a step towards redemption, but it's crucial to recognize that her epiphany comes far too late in the game. After years of manipulation, emotional turmoil, and attempts to undermine your happiness, her apologies ring hollow in the face of the damage she's caused. It's understandable that you feel numb and conflicted after your last interaction with her, but it's important to remember that you've taken the necessary steps to move forward and create a brighter future for yourself and your children. Thank you for sharing your journey with us. And I wish you all the best as you continue to navigate this new chapter in your life, OP. 
Remember, you deserve happiness and fulfillment, and you've taken the courageous steps to pursue it. As I promised, the whole story. I was married for two years at the time. Wife is a serious TikTok junkie, sends me at least 20 a day. We are both in our early 20s. Start sending ones about open marriages and also some podcasts. A few long talks about how we are young and should try this before we are old and have kids. After a few months of pushing and pushing, I give in and we set up some boundaries. No unprotected sex. Two, nothing in our house and no overnight stays. Three, if sex occurs with someone else, no details, no touching each other for 30 days, and a doctor's visit and cleared before any intimacy between us. We open our marriage. She starts going on dates on Friday nights. I work anyways. I get home normally around 10 p.m. For the first year, it was kind of fun. She goes out on a date. By the time I get home, she is already home or getting home at the same time. She tells me what they did on the date and she jumps me. They are just dates, no sex or intimacy. During this first year, I myself go on three dates. Each one goes the exact same way. They find out I am married and it is not what they are looking for. It was nice meeting you. After three dates, I quit. Then, one Friday night, she doesn't get home till like 3 a.m. Comes in, makes a joke about being too sore and tired for anything. See some hickey marks on her chest and thighs. Not going to lie, was hurt and upset by this. Monday or Tuesday, I don't remember. She tries to initiate with me and I remind her of rule number three. She gives me the, are you serious, 30 days and a doctor's visit? I said, yes, deadly serious. This becomes a pattern for us. She goes out with her bad boy on Friday nights, has her fun, then spends the rest of the week trying to get me to change rule number three. To me, feels like she put me on a shelf. I start avoiding her, working more out of the house, even if just out walking. Start becoming a lot more physically active. Start losing some weight. She is full in a fog of new relationship energy and doesn't notice and thinks I am out doing my own thing. Five months of being on a shelf. I'm not seeing a reason to remain in this marriage. I was selling my happiness so she could be happy, and I was running out of things to sell. Up to this point, she has not broken any boundaries, and every time I bring up maybe she should step back from him, I am overreacting and blowing this way out of proportion. It's just some fun one night a week. Our fourth wedding anniversary day arrives, and I take the day off of work, make her dinner, and clean the house. She gets home from work at four, hops in the shower, gets dressed up, tells me she's going to a bar to see a local band and not to wait up. She completely forgot about our anniversary. I am destroyed. I wake up Saturday morning at 9 a.m. and she never came home. Boundary number two broken. I send her one simple text. You have broken our boundary of no sleeping over. I am done. At 11.30, she starts calling, telling me she just closed her eyes for a second and passed out. It was an accident. I'm so sorry. It will never happen again. My unwillingness to even talk about it causes her to wake up out of her fog some. She ends up coming to my work just before we open and makes a scene in front of the whole staff and the owners. I'm finally able to calm her down enough and she leaves I promised on Sunday we can discuss it. I get home from work Saturday night and she once again tries to have sex with me and I again tell her rule number three. She then tells me that she will no longer be seeing him and wants to close the marriage and work on reconnecting with me. Seems she freaked out when she woke up there, got my texts and he made fun of her and she realized how much of an a-hole he was. She tries every day to be intimate with me and fails badly. At this point, I have no need or want or desire for her. She is a roommate. Barely the 30 days goes by, she goes to the doctor and gets checked out. She is clean of diseases, but is pregnant. I'm not sure where her mind was with this, but she comes home excited and tells me we are pregnant. I tell her, good, I hope you two will be happy together. Looks at me confused for a few minutes and starts crying. She, a few days later, sends him a text telling him. His response is, Wow, sucks to be you. Might want to pass it off as your husband's. Laters. I file for divorce soon after. She starts doing anything and everything to change my mind about the divorce, make promises, begs, pleads, offers everything under the sun asking for a chance to fix us. I am polite and nice about it, but not having any of it. I'm stuck living with her for a while until our lease is up. We fall into a new pattern. She tries to be intimate with me. I turn her down. She gets upset. I go for a run. My resentment of her is growing, just like her baby bump. Three weeks ago, she comes in my room to talk. She brought home pizza for dinner. Starts with how being pregnant she is, super horny all the time, and tries yet again to have sex with me. I, at this point, am running out of politeness. Tell her sorry, I am not into fat chicks. Maybe hit Tinder, sure, someone on there would be down for it. 
She leaves the room crying. Also, we had our first divorce hearing after the judge slapped six weeks of marriage counseling on us, court ordered. We go two sessions. Kinda a meet and greet thing, talk to us separately to get our stories, I guess. I just want this over so we can move on with our lives. Last Sunday was my birthday. On that Friday before it, she asked me to spend my birthday with her to celebrate it. I decline her invitation. She keeps pushing the subject and I snap. I tell her I don't waste special occasions on her anymore. The last one was our fourth anniversary in which she went out to get knocked up by some pothead loser. I leave her crying in the kitchen, head to work, told her I would see her on Monday for our court ordered waste of time. Monday morning, I'm at marriage counseling and she never shows. I call her, nothing. Call her friends, nothing. Call her parents. She got arrested Sunday morning for DUI and reckless endangerment, and they are on the way. I offer our house for them to stay at. I have a couch at a friend's house. My lawyer goes to the judge and expedites things. My divorce finalized this past Friday. Yesterday, I helped them pack some of her stuff, and today, going to help them load a U-Haul they rented. She gets released tomorrow, and they are taking her back home with them. She wants to see me, but I feel that will just be worse for the both of us. We both need to move on. First response from GH6ST. That 30 day rule likely saved you from being stuck to her for another 18 years. I guarantee you she would have tried to pass the baby off as yours if the two of you were having sex at the time. Good luck on your future. Joma's witness says, I'm really glad you stood up for yourself, my guy. Keep it going. You'll find someone who only wants you. Levanthus adds in next. The funny thing is you stood by the rules and gave her every chance to improve and she broke every single one of them. Number three, she tried consistently to break, showing a complete disrespect. Imagine that, she had the entire thing handed to her exactly as she wanted it, and it wasn't enough. And then she thought you would still stay after she broke every rule, but you didn't. And you're a dang hero for that. I really saw this story going another way, but this was the best outcome. You got rid of a miserable person who tried to take advantage of you every single step of the way. Corky Macaroon 7999 chimes in, do not sign the birth certificate and ask your lawyer as to how to get out of not paying child support. You would need to show DNA tests to show that you are not the father and do not proclaim the kid as your own otherwise courts might compel you to pay child support. Please check with your lawyer regarding kids born with another father during the marriage. The OP replies, lawyer said I am free and clear, just super emotional today, been crying, not sure for what, just... The concept of open marriage or any open relationship, whether wedding rings are involved or not, runs counter to everything we've been taught about romantic commitment. And that's exactly why it fascinates so many of us. An open marriage can be healthy, but it won't likely save a relationship that's in trouble. Certainly, an open relationship cannot save a marriage. In fact, if there are existing conflicts, power struggles, and other issues in a relationship, when you open up a monogamous relationship, those will become magnified times 10. Working to achieve excellent communication is required before you both embark on something like this. Talking is key in a relationship. I'm sorry that your marriage had to end this way, OP. She definitely didn't fully appreciate what she had until it was too late. What are your thoughts on open relationships? Meanwhile, our next OP wants off this roller coaster. He's already sleeping over at her house. My soon to be ex-husband blindsided me and our kids one month ago today. It went like this. Day one, doesn't have the same feelings as before and needs some space. Day two, has a friend he's been talking to at work and kissed. Day three, loves me and wants to be with me and doesn't know how he got to this point. Wants to repair our marriage and hopes to God I can forgive him. Day four, changes his mind and tells me he made a mistake. He wants out and wants a divorce. Every day since then has been a roller coaster. My emotions have run from anguish to rage and everything in between. There were no signs he was unhappy with me. He didn't talk to one soul amongst our friends, his friends, his family, about how he was feeling. He just talked to her. We were together in every sense of the word up until the day before he told me all this crap. I freaking hate her with every fiber of my being, and I'm coming close to hating him just as much. The only thing that stops me from hating him that much are the children we share. They're so disillusioned with him and don't know what to say or think when they're around him. They started counseling last week. I'm not in counseling because we can't afford it, but luckily I have a solid support group to turn to. How do people do things like this and walk around freely as if they're good people? How do people live with themselves knowing they've caused hurt that can't even be measured? I took my kids for a drive last evening and he called while we were out to say goodnight to them. 
he's been staying with his mother, said he was going to bed, etc. They said goodnight, and then I said I'd take them to get a treat. It's summer, why not? After we got the treat, I said let's go leave a silly note on dad's truck for him to find in the morning. They've been having a lot of heartache and pain over this, and I suggested the note to maybe start more dialogue with the three of them. They used to leave notes for him on his coffee mug or his lunchbox, and they liked the idea and got a napkin and pen, trying to figure out what to write. Well, as you can guess, we roll by his mother's house and his truck isn't there. To say that I wanted to shrivel into a ball of shame is an understatement. Now my kids have first-hand evidence of his lying and it's all because I wanted to help them bridge a gap. I truly believed he would have been there because in the last four days, he said some things to me that made me pause and wonder if he was starting to realize what he was doing was wrong. And maybe, just maybe, we could actually rebuild our marriage. I was dead wrong. I texted him and told him to call me ASAP and when he called me back, I asked him why his truck wasn't at his mom's. I told him why we drove by. He told me he was on a job downtown. He does work nights every so often. I laughed and said, oh, on a job, huh? You just told me you were going to bed. We hung up and I barely slept. I spoke to him again just a bit ago and asked him why he just couldn't tell me the dang truth about where he was last night. Why can't he just kill the dream I have completely so I can move the hell on? All he would tell me was that it was inappropriate and that I already know the answer. He still couldn't just say it outright. The effing coward? Yes, I spent the night at her place. She's dang near 10 years older than me, has red hair, which he has told me for years that he is not attracted to. He's told me several things about her personal life. She's a grandmother and a divorcee who was left by her husband for another woman herself, but refuses to tell me her name. As if knowing her name is going to make it any less painful. She works with him, of course. This old freaking C word knew dang well he was married and still allowed something to happen between them. She is the lowest of the low especially since she knows what it's like to be hurt like this. And my husband isn't much farther up the rung of low as crap human beings. And now I'm going to have to fake it for my kids' sakes. Continue to make sure that they don't hear me talk bad about him and don't turn them against him. God, that ticks me off so much. He gets exactly what he wants and I'm the one who has to be civil? Just take it on the chin while he cozies up to his rebound, the one he has had in the wings. We've been together for 21 years and married for nearly 15 of those and have built an entire life and he wants to be friends after doing this? Is he on crack? I'm calling my lawyer as soon as her office opens up. I'm fast tracking this to go through because I can't stand to see or talk to him. My plan is to go no contact. I have no interest in having any sort of relationship with him. I can be cordial and all that crap, but I'm not sharing holidays, which he actually thinks can happen, or even a room with him unless I absolutely have to. Jesus H, how am I not supposed to think that I've wasted my life with this man? I got two amazing children out of our relationship and they're the only things that have kept me going. I guess that's what we were meant to be together for, the kids. I'm grateful for them and I can only hope that I don't lose my crap along the way. New Arrival 9860 has our first comment. You don't have to be friends to be successful co-parents as long as you can be cordial and civil when discussing the children and make choices that are in the children's best interest. You can cut them out of the rest of your universe the OP replies, and that's what I'm going to have to do. Seeing him and talking to him is beyond painful. Knowing that she is running her hands through his hair, she gets to snuggle with him and kiss him and feel his touch, it makes me sick to my stomach. The Wise Man 4 adds, This is heartbreaking to read. I know all of your pain. Everybody here does. The best thing to do is not to engage at all with him. They panic and squirm when they realize we stop pining. Ignore anything else that doesn't have to do with our kids. Don't let him talk to you about anything. These people are so cruel. F him. You do not have to be friends with him. Any friends who are downplaying this or forcing you to get over it, demote them to acquaintance and then make better friends. Be the responsible parent for your kids. Guy Winch did a TED talk. I loved following that advice. Make the list he suggests and become best friends with that list. Then get the Leave a Cheater audiobook and listen to it on repeat. Do not go to him for comfort. You and your kids are on your way to a more peaceful life, which is the dumbest crap to read when you feel as terrible as you do right now, but I promise, no contact in gray rock. You'll start to realize that without them in your head, you start to grow. Create really good memories with yourself and with your kids right now. I went to Disneyland twice, the zoo, a concert, and several other things in the first two months of finding out about my husband's affair. Creating those memories helps your brain understand that your life will be great without him one day. Also, don't protect his reputation 
Tell people what he's done. They'll validate you that it is the sickest, grossest, crustiest thing somebody can do to somebody else. Reach out on here, always, if you need to. Tercer78 adds, Now is an excellent time to implement the 180 and begin gray rocking. No more in-person conversations. Push it all to text while working towards getting a co-parenting app. You have to focus on your own healing. He is incapable of giving that to you. Find emotional outlets that don't involve talking to him. Like working out, yoga, journaling, or some other hobby. Read Leave a Cheater Gain a Life, Cheating in a Nutshell, and The Body Keeps the Score. The goal is to create the emotional distance you need to begin to heal. The OP replies back, Thank you to everyone who comments and offers support and advice. It is all appreciated. What hurts my heart the most are two things. One, my kids have now seen firsthand that he's a liar, and two, I mean so little to him. He says differently that he cares a lot for me and wants to do what's right and take care of me and the kids. He's full of crap. He's only saying that to absolve him of the guilt of what he is doing. He knows it is wrong. He knows it. I was originally going to see him in person today, but I have decided to go full no contact. I'm going out today to buy my kids their own phones. We've been avoiding that for years, but now it has to be done. And we'll be calling my lawyer shortly to inform her that every ounce of communication will be done via her. I want to schedule a meeting with him in her office to discuss custody, as I need someone whom is on my side right there with me. You know what he said to me as he was packing a bag for himself the day that he left? I thought I could do both, Finn. I thought I could handle both, but I can't. Meaning, he was willing to be and act like my husband and also have the side pieces. He was willing to put me at risk like that. But I guess he just couldn't go through with that, so he left. I'm sorry, OP. Clearly your ex is extremely unhappy with himself and he had to ruin something so beautiful. It honestly sounds like he has completely lost himself and has no idea what he wants, who he is, and what to do. It's extremely unfair to you and your girls. You are absolutely trying and doing the best that you can. I'm so proud of you. I wish people were able to be more honest with themselves and their partners. It's extremely frustrating dealing with people like this, especially partners. They look completely unrecognizable to not only you, but themselves. Communicating with you about how he was feeling could have completely changed the outcome of this marriage. Perhaps the two of you could have worked something out. Unfortunately, his actions mean that his kids have to see him in this new light. And you know what? That's not on you. That's on him. Be honest with him about how his actions affect his children, as the children are the most important things right now. You are so loved, OP. You will find peace and happiness again. Wife, 36 female, wanted an open marriage after I, 38 male, started dating. She wants to add more rules. What would you do in my position? Two and a half years ago, my wife, Sarah, 36 female, asked me to open our marriage. She strongly implied the alternative was divorce. After thinking it through, I said yes, primarily because we do have two children, I worked long hours, and divorce sounded horrible. So I set up some ground rules. No bringing dates into our house. No dating mutual friends, acquaintances, family members, colleagues, keeping things private. For the next two years, I focused on my job and on my kids. I worked long hours, little free time I had, I devoted to my kids. I didn't have the time for dating, so I wasn't even trying. I moved to another room because the thought of Sarah having sex with another man, then sleeping in my bed felt horrible. Our relationship became purely transactional. We became partners at raising kids. I didn't want to know anything about her sex life. This summer, I managed to fulfill my financial goals. I do not have any debt whatsoever. Both of my kids have enough money in their college fund, and all I have to do is keep adding savings every month into the fund I made for their first home deposits. So I did some math and decided to cut my work from 74 hours to just 30 per week. Sarah wanted to get indebted again to buy another house and a new car. I said no. I used my free time to finally have a vacation I really needed. Took the older son with me to tour the US together. Did some renovation work on our house. Turned the basement into a man cave. Started working out, playing sports, leading a healthier life. Then I actually started trying to land a date. For me, just having sex with somebody is not my thing. I wanted to at least be a friend before that. To go out together, watch movies, have fun, and have sex. So I dated a couple of women and found a Jane with whom I clicked. With Jane, I was going out to concerts, art galleries, comic cons, movies, and we would boink too. Sarah wanted to talk about my dates. I said no. Then I caught Sarah snooping through my phone and we had a very strong worded argument. Now Sarah wants to update the terms of our open marriage. She wants us to repair our marriage by going to a counselor. She wants us to sleep in the same room, to go outside and have fun together. Our outside of marriage relationships 
are to be strictly sexual and nothing else. And we are to talk about our sexual partners. I told her that I am content with the situation as it is, and I don't mind if she finds a partner to go out with. I encourage her to, and I don't want to talk about our partners. She is holding her ground. At this point, I'm split between trying to fix our marriage and handing her divorce papers. I need advice, guys. Here's some relevant comments that the OP said, replying to a few comments. But man, you were working 74 hours per week and spending your free time with the kids. After she decided to open our marriage, at which point I pretty much focused on completing financial goals as soon as possible. I was working longer hours before that, but not that long, and I was finding time to spend with Sarah. Now that you have the free time, you're still choosing not to see your wife. I actually left her to initiate that. If she wished to, she didn't. So yeah, she probably just didn't estimate you'd be having full-on simultaneous relationships. Except I'm not having two simultaneous relationships. Since Sarah decided to open our marriage, the two of us didn't have any intimate moments. We didn't sleep together. We didn't go outside together. After I switched to working 30 hours, she didn't initiate to change anything. Our relationship was co-parenting under the same roof, really. Once I started dating other women, she started snooping around. Once she found out I was dating Jane, she wanted to change the rules. Even then, she said nothing about closing the relationship, just changed to only having sex outside the marriage, which boils down to me not being able to have a single intimate relationship. Update, January 29th, 2024. It sounds like you did a little bit less of opening your marriage and sort of just gave your wife permission to cheat and call it spicing things up or keeping things exciting. As soon as she found out you actually wanted some emotional connection, she cuts it off because only she can have fun with other people. How dare you try to actually enjoy the experience, OP? Update. Several people asked for an update on my previous post. So here it is. Me and my wife Sarah had two sessions with a couples counselor. The counselor was being very dedicated and professional. However, Sarah kept making demands which felt very unreasonable and unfair. She wants to keep an open relationship which is only about sex. She doesn't want to find a job and keep working. She wants us to buy a new house. In every variation, she stubbornly wasn't to have two thirds of these things. Today, during the counseling, she threatened divorce. After counseling, she said the counselor was taking my side and wanted to change to another counselor. Although I think the counselor was just trying to be fair and find a compromise. I had a talk with the lawyer and started divorce proceedings. She will get the papers in a couple of days. I will give her two months to start earning on her own and after that, I'm not giving any money whatsoever to her anymore. P.S. I just wanted to add that I only started working 74 hours a week after she decided to open our marriage. Before that I was working around 50 hours a week, wasn't spending my time at bars and clubs either helped with chores as much as I could and I was being home and available every weekend. Let's see what the community has to say. First up, wife, you know what'll fix this relationship? Buying another house and husband going back to working 70 plus hours a week, that way there's no time for other relationships. And I can have my cake and eat it too. Someone else adds, oh, I hadn't considered the possibility that opening the marriage might mean that he'd benefit too, might be time for another ultimatum. The next person adds, I'm turning into an unskippable cutscene in therapy. Yet another example of crappy partner wants permission to F other people. It's surprised to find out they are, in fact, a crappy partner and their significant other can do better. Not quite cake eatery territory, but like not far from it. And one more person chimes in. She tried to be a cake eater when she said, hey, let's take on more debt so that you can keep working 74 hours a week and I can spend your money with my lover. Good thing he stood his ground. It's clear that you've made efforts to adapt to the open marriage arrangement, but it seems like your wife's expectations and demands have become unreasonable and unfair. Seeking counseling was a positive step, but if your wife is unwilling to work towards a fair compromise, your choice to go forward with divorce proceedings is a smart one. Your decision to establish boundaries and take control of your own happiness is commendable, OP. And like the comment said, she just wanted to fool around with other people while her husband was out paying the bills and buying a brand new home for her to take to her boy toys to. She's in for a rude awakening. What would you have done? What do you make of OP's soon-to-be ex giving him an ultimatum? Next up, a bit of the Jelly Bellies. After we, me 35 female, opened up our relationship, younger men have been throwing themselves at me. Husband, 40 male, is displeased. I'm a 35 female. Husband is 40 male. We agreed to open up our marriage. I am LL and wasn't very interested in sex, and he is HL. Since we opened up our marriage, most of the younger men have been throwing themselves at me. I have been very picky, but there are a lot of them. My partner is a younger man who's unexpectedly attractive to me. He is the physically opposite of my husband. 
My husband is very displeased. He feels emasculated. I don't want to close my side of the relationship, but I don't want him hounding me for sex. Is there a compromise we can reach? Why does he feel this way when it was his idea and he is also getting action? Let's see what some of the relevant comments have to say. First up, he doesn't want to open your relationship. He wants to have sex while you don't. The OP replies, that's why we opened it. He said he couldn't stand not having his needs met. The next person says, if he opened things because of your low libido, it could be hitting him hard emotionally. If you're now far more sexually active with others than you were with him, you're not doing anything wrong, but I could definitely see him having anxiety about your romantic and sexual feelings towards him. The OP replies, I'm not far more sexually active with my other partner. I am happy with once a week, but our styles match up more than mine and my husband. My husband is explorative and likes partners who are ready to go whenever, wherever. He is happy with his partners, as far as I know. They have a lot of kinks they are exploring. I need non-sexual affection, kissing, foreplay to be in the mood. I prefer a delicate, more sensual touch. I still find my husband attractive, but I can't get aroused instantly and be ready to go. It's painful and it feels like a chore half the time. I don't think he finds me that attractive anymore, but that's life. Some folks don't actually understand what an open relationship is actually about. Open relationships are relationships just like any other. There are boundaries just like a monogamous relationship. Maybe sometimes cheaters use open relationships as an excuse to have relations with others and for their partners to be okay with it as it happens right under their nose. Maybe that's because people don't actually sit down and discuss the full parameters of it all and what it means to both of them. Open relationships aren't always just about what happens in bed. Update. I, 35 female, talked with my husband, 40 male, and we have more clarity where we stand. To clarify, I am still low libido. I am happy with once a week or every two weeks. My husband is explorative and likes partners who are ready to go whenever, wherever. He has a lot of kinks that they are exploring. I need non-sexual affection, kissing, foreplay to be in the mood. I prefer a delicate, more sensual touch. I still find my husband incredibly attractive, but I can't get aroused instantly and be ready to go. It's painful and it feels like a chore half the time. I know he doesn't find me as attractive. He told me he needed his needs met and I couldn't fulfill them. We opened up the relationship. My husband and I had sex once since it began. He had learned things from his partners. We both hated it. I didn't like him yanking my hair hard or wrapping his hand around my throat to let alone the kinker stuff he wanted. He hated how frigid it was. My husband needs sex to be affectionate, but we weren't having it, so he told me to go find affection somewhere else. I tried dating apps, but I wasn't interested in hookups. I really wanted affection, romantic or platonic. Ironically, men my age or older were looking for younger women or hookups. Younger men and women were more likely to want affection. I ended up meeting my partner in person through a mutual hobby. I also made some friends through friendship apps. My husband and I have and can do our own thing separately, but my partner needs a lot of time, affection, and attention from me. He gets a bit territorial. I don't think he feels threatened by my husband, but my husband has remarked that my partner is always over. My husband has an apartment for his partners and lets me use the house. Finally, I talked with my husband on why he feels emasculated. He says he is over jealousy about me but he is jealous about partners. He says that my partner and the men I attract are far more attractive than I should have been able to get. It made no sense as I have aged and don't look as attractive as I did back when I was 20. Meanwhile, he should be in the peak of his attractiveness. He's very put together and he expected that as an attractive older man with disposable cash that women would be flocking to him. They do, but he doesn't like them for various reasons. Attractive young women want him to spend a lot of cash. They're not interested in an equal relationship and expect him to spoil them. They're bratty and entitled. Attractive young women who don't want money have mental health issues. Young women in the kink community and who are poly were ugly. Would-be mistresses would leave when they found out he was in an open marriage. I don't know what to say. I can't help him with his problem. Edit. My husband and I both thought that I would only get men interested in no strings sex or one night stands, which I would not be interested in rather than a close, affectionate, frankly committed relationship that I desired and filtered for. Surprisingly, there are men who wanted the latter. Edit 2. There are a lot of comments saying my husband has few prospects or he isn't getting as much action as he thought. This is untrue. He is a very handsome man and has been with several women since we opened up. A lot of women are attracted to him. He has sex with beautiful women, kinky women, accomplished women. He should be happy. At this point, I think he's just looking for something to be unhappy about. 
there is no perfect partner that meets his requirements. Now let's get some relevant comments from the community. So basically, he wants some beautiful woman in her prime who has a successful career to have disposable income for and great mental health to be settled at being his mistress. Oh yeah, can't forget the fact he expects her to have sex on demand and be very kinky. It looks like he has very high standards. The OP replies, also someone who is kinky and sexually open to do a lot of things. I told him he should compromise, but he's unwilling because he's found plenty of women who fulfill some of his expectations, so he thinks he can find someone who will fulfill all of them. I don't think he's looking for a person, just a manifestation of all his desires. Sounds like your husband is looking for a fantasy, an itch that he can't quite be scratched. And it sounds like it's all a him problem. The fact that he's jealous is not your problem at all. He agreed to the open marriage and now he's upset that you're behaving as if it's open. How does that make sense? Seems like he's realizing that an open relationship isn't quite what he expected. Whatever it is, you guys aren't on the same page. What do you make of all this? Finally, a daughter who wasn't interested in a trip down memory lane. I have no idea on how to proceed with this one. My wife and I just met my father-in-law's middle school and high school sweetheart, who cheated and left him for his best friend. She recognized my wife as his daughter the second she saw her. My question is, why now? Why after 34 years? What was she trying to accomplish by ambushing and upsetting my wife? Also, any advice on how to resolve this would be appreciated as I have no idea on what to do or how to approach this. I cannot talk to my father-in-law, at least not at the moment, as he is a truck driver and is currently somewhere in Central Europe. And while on the road driving, anything that can distract him from the road outside of absolute emergency is absolutely off limits. I apologize in advance for the rate that I might be responding, anxiety, but I will read everything and would be grateful for any bit of advice or shared opinion that you can give me. So we go to town next to ours because I had work to do there. Rain started pouring and my shoes were soaked in seconds. Thanks to a recommendation of a friend of ours, we entered a shop that had a very good quality shoes, imported from Germany. The lady started staring at my wife the second she saw her. She still gave me good shoes and I bought them, plus warm socks that she gave me as a gift. Then she asked my wife if she was from our hometown to which she replied yes. Then she asked her if she was my father-in-law's daughter. My wife was a little taken aback by the directness of a question, but still confirmed. Then the lady revealed that she and him dated all the way from middle school to the end of high school when she left him, but when she returned, he had moved on. She was alone for some time, but ultimately moved on as well and got married to her husband, who was from this town and she moved in with him here. She then complimented my wife and told her that last she saw her was when she was 10. Wife is 31 now. She asked my wife many questions about my in-laws and my wife answered several times before I came to my senses and upon seeing how upset my wife was getting, gave an excuse for us to leave. Father-in-law's ex sent us a hi to my father-in-law and told us not to be strangers. My wife started crying the second we left the shop and honestly, the way she was ambushed, I do not blame her. I blame myself for not reacting quicker. If I did, I could have spared her at least more of the situation. On the ride back, my wife was very quiet, which was unusual for her to be. When we got home, my mother-in-law, who was watching our kids, greeted us at the door and my wife gave her a long, silent hug, which was a clear sign of how upset she was, and just left for our bedroom. My mother-in-law was puzzled and I told her everything. She took it relatively calm and told me what my father-in-law's ex left out. She had cheated with his best friend since childhood at the time and ultimately left to be with him. Six months later, she left the affair partner after catching him cheating and tried to get back with my father-in-law, but he rejected her as he had moved on and was already dating mother-in-law. She did not take it well and even tried on several occasions to break them apart using very dirty methods, even attempting to involve my father-in-law's sister and her and his parents who were close friends and neighbors. Both attempts unsuccessful. As of now, my wife is in her room and I will talk to her when I get my bearings on how to approach this. I also want to give her breathing space so she can process the situation and we can talk about it with clear heads. Let's see what the community thinks. First commenter, there's nothing to solve here. You've encountered an incredibly malevolent person in your family's life. This isn't a person or situation that can be fixed by any of you, so best not to contact her. Fortunately, your father-in-law has found good healthy support in his wife and family. That's commendable. My best advice is to listen to your wife when she's ready to talk. She's unable to articulate a rush of awkward and negative feelings, which is completely normal. It's good you were there because you can relate and help her recognize what she's going through in a way that's neither dismissive or coddling. Good on you for disrupting the dynamic. 
May your protective instincts serve you both in a long and healthy marriage. The next person says, I think the timing was accidental, and this woman has carried the truth and guilt of how she treated your father-in-law for 34 years, and sees an opportunity to soothe her own guilt by now making everything seem normal, and they were just a couple that used to date minimizing her choice and the effects on your father-in-law of that choice. Nobody wants to be remembered as a cheater, yet even 34 years later, she still carries that choice. One more comment. She met the woman that effed up and realized it. The woman didn't ambush her. You came to her by chance. So you're a woman around 50 and you work in a shoe store and you have some regrets for some things you did when younger. This young woman walks into her store one day and she looks shockingly like one of those regrets, maybe the biggest one. Her first love, whom she spent part of her childhood and teen years with, and then betrayed for nothing. And he has a daughter, and that could have been her daughter. She's not thinking clearly at all. She confirms that it is, indeed his daughter, and then there are all these regrets and emotions, and she has to tell someone. She didn't want to hurt your wife. Maybe she still lacks the empathy which led her to cheat in the first place, but she just has to say something, to share with someone. I'm sorry your wife was upset by this, but it should just confirm to her that her dad is a good guy and a strong one for not taking a cheater back. These events led to her birth, your marriage. You guys are all lucky to have each other. This woman may have never experienced that because of what she did. I pity her. Yeah, the comments are right here. There's really nothing to solve and nothing for you to do or that you should do. Don't give it any more energy. This woman doesn't deserve it. And although your wife was upset as it can be jarring to hear, Rest assured that your father-in-law is a good man and that all is as it should be. All that's to say that the woman is unhinged and was just looking to stir the pot. Update. This is what happened after I posted this. I took my time and after a while I got to my wife's room. In addition of our shared bedroom, we have separate rooms at home that we use as offices. And I hugged her and told her that I loved her and was there for her when she needed me. She took her time, but in the end she opened up to me and told me how she feels. She was not upset by the ghost of her father-in-law's past coming to life, but by the way this woman acted. She was still nice, but was asking questions in a very invasive and unwelcome way. And the way she recognized my wife was unsettling. It took her by surprise. This was, and is not, an emotionally fragile person who cannot handle strangers. Hell, she handled my crazy ex who made an attempt to get back with me many years ago. But she has her limits. I also spoke to my mother-in-law on the phone and she revealed some more things about this woman. See, in addition to this woman trying to break my in-laws when she found out about them, she did something that got me seething with rage. Four years after her attempting to get back with father-in-law, she encountered my mother-in-law, my wife, who was a toddler at the time, and my mother-in-law's mother, wife's maternal grandma. Long story short, she made a scene and threw a rock at my mother-in-law. The rock hit my wife in the forehead instead. She was not even two at the time. My wife's grandma and some people chased her off. This was the same woman we met. My wife still has the scar on her forehead. This woman was not sorry of what she did. My mother-in-law told my father-in-law's parents and they told hers. From then on out, there were no problems whatsoever. After some time, my anger subsided and I realized that this was not the present issue and right now my wife needs me and she was my priority. After dinner and after we put our kids to bed, I told my wife that we were never going to this lady's shop again. We were done with that situation and the day as a whole. We just had to put this behind us and what better way to do that then sleep on it. After all, the dawn is brighter than the dusk. Today after breakfast, I took my wife out for a walk. Our hometown is small, but it has a beautiful park on the south bank of the Danube River. We got there and we got to our favorite restaurant. It is three-story building that has incredible views of the river. And we just spent a good time together. We talked again and we put this thing behind us. I mean, what else could we do at this point? We got home and everything was okay. We are going to forget about yesterday and this woman. This ghost of the past will remain a ghost. I also decided that I will not tell my father-in-law as it would serve no purpose at this point. To end this on a cheerful note, the shoes are really good. My, 43 male, girlfriend, 36 female, asked to open the relationship and I just pointed her to the door. So like the title says, my, 43 male, girlfriend, 36 female, asked that we open the relationship and I just pointed her to the door. Was it too much? I strongly believe that in a monogamous relationship when someone asks to open it, well, it's because that person saw something else out there and is ready to try it instead of working on the relationship, basically is blindsiding his or her partner. So I have been with Fran, 36, over the last two years and a half. 
almost two as a couple. I thought that things were moving smoothly and was about to ask her to move in at the beginning of April, but lately she was acting rather distant, so I decided to wait a little bit and watch. I was cheated on in the past, so I'm a little cautious with some signs. Out of nowhere, this last Friday, she asked me to open the relationship. She gave me all of her big speech, and when she entered her presentation, I asked her if she has someone in mind, because it's not like we decided today and basically going out with other persons tomorrow. Basically, I trick her into telling me what I already knew. And yes, she has someone in mind, which means to me that either she already did it or she has it all set up. So I got up, walked around the apartment while she was trying to sell that this could be good for both of us in our relationship. By the time she ended talking, I handed her one of my sports bags with all of her stuff in it and tell her to leave the spare key over the table on her way out. That we are done and she knows why. Then I went to the couch and turned on the TV, just trying to look indifferent and save face. She was speechless for a while, about to cry, but before she could say something, I tell her that I didn't want to talk about anything and she should leave. As soon as she left, I felt like crap, so unworthy, cried a little, and as right now, I'm still mourning. My phone has been going almost nuclear with all the calls and texts I received from her friends of both sides about my extreme reaction over her simple request. Don't know what she told them. So now I'm sitting wondering if I really went overboard and at the same time fighting the urge to run back to her. Because deep inside, even knowing my feelings for her are still there, the trust is gone and I'm not going to spend all my time watching her movements. It's not healthy. Maybe in time. Really, I don't know. Before anyone pointed out, yes, I know. My reaction is pure reflection of me, not what she did or what she was about to do or could do. So, did I go overboard? Ask for an opinion and the community will provide. Our first one goes like this. What you did was fine. If she was not satisfied with a relationship, she should have handled that with you, not by planning a sex date with someone else. The OP replies, thanks, my point exactly. The next piece of advice states, You were very nice to her considering what she did. Anyone who says any different is no friend of yours. The OP replies, It's not like I think I did wrong, but some of my friends are trying to patch things up because they care and telling me that I was too extreme in the hope of we could find a way back. So even if it sounds silly, asking perspective from unknown people helps. Another community member chimes in, Handled perfectly. You did nothing wrong. She already had feelings for another person at least sexually, so she should go have fun with them. She just doesn't get to go have that fun and have you. If people in your life don't understand that, then they can pound sand too. No, I don't think you went overboard, OP. I think these comments have a point. She already had feelings for someone else, and she was looking for an excuse to be with them while not having the guts to just leave you. And she can't go on test driving other folks while still being with you. That's not how an open relationship works. If she wanted out, she should have just said that, and not put you in a position that you aren't comfortable with. I mean, sure, you may have been coming from a place of insecurity, but it was unfair of her to put you in that position. Update. First of all, thanks for all of your replies and upvotes. It never crossed my mind that this post would have this much attention. I just wrote to put order in my ideas and vent a little, and with the hope of a few people told me if I went overboard, but I didn't expect the amount of replies I got. So many thanks for all of that. Some people pointed that maybe I went overboard, that maybe she wasn't aware of my position on the subject. I replied to some, but there were too many comments to get back to it all. So to clarify, maybe a year back, approximately, we had a couple of friends in a similar situation. And for like a month, that was the main theme of conversation on our group for friends. And every time I said that for me is a big no. And if one person in a relationship needs to be with other persons, well, he or she should leave. About the friends trying to mend things up, well, they weren't totally aware of the situation. Yesterday after I posted here, and with my ideas more defined, went to see a group of them and told them my point. All of them agree with me at different levels. Some of them wanted to let it go, others wanted to burn her at the stake. Of course, a few girls in the group pointed that I could do things in a better way, and also there were a few questions about if I could consider giving her another chance. But for me, the main issue is not feelings. I know that I love her but the trust is gone, and I don't want to find myself wondering all the time what she's up to. After I left, my friends talked to the other persons that weren't there, and basically the waters have calmed. If you are wondering what she is doing, really I don't know. I got a few texts from her, but haven't read them yet. 
and don't think I will do it soon. Anyway, I know it's not much, but this is all I got for now. Note, when I first joined this part of Reddit, I didn't get that people got here by posting their relationship troubles, but I do get it now. I think you're right about the trust. Her eyes have been wandering and that can hurt. Obviously, she has her eyes on someone else and her attention outside of your relationship. Final update. Final update. My, 43 male, girlfriend, 36 female, asked to open the relationship and I just pointed her to the door. Hello to every stranger interested in how things ended. I wasn't much on the idea of posting another update, but some people have been asking, so here it is. Finally, after listening to various friends and some Reddit users, I talked to her, just to sort things out. Last Friday, we met at our regular place where we take coffee. At the distance, she looked great. So great that I just wanted to say, F it, and drag her back to my place. It took a lot of restraining to not do it. When I got close to her, I noticed her sadness and she still has her eyes irritated from crying. We sat and before she could say a word, I asked her to tell me the entire story and that please don't let anything out of it, that I need it, and then I would ask her a few things and also needed all the truth. The story is pretty basic. Around two months before she asked for the open relationship on her girl's dancing night out, they met this exotic, good-looking guy. During the first month, he was the new flavor that all the single friends in the group were trying out, which leads to the girls taking and sharing experiences. Eventually, this guy that was having his way with all the girls around him set his eyes on Fran and began to flirt with her, taking her to the dance floor, having fun. Well, here's when she should have stopped things because we had an arrangement with dancing night that she would stay away from any guy because we guys are pigs and it's pretty rare that a guy just wants to dance. Anyway, because of the excitement, she went for it, enjoyed the attention of this guy and had a great time dancing. Looking at the timeline, this was around the time I noticed that Fran was distant. Moving forward a few weeks, her friends were sharing more intimate stories about the guy and that got into her mind. She found herself fantasizing doing it with him. Also, he was trying to make a move on her too. But from what she told me, she didn't go for it because she was with me. Drinks and drunken friends are bad counselors. And once the idea of opening the relationship came out, they were over two weeks chatting about how to convince me that because long time ago, I had threesomes and also swinged a little, I should be okay with the idea of an open relationship. But threesomes and swinging are things you do as a couple and out of the pure excitement, at least for me, and was a long time ago, early 20s. All this led to the day she asked to open the relationship. She told me that she and her friends never thought that I would end the relationship in the moment, that the worst scenario would be me getting angry and saying no, so there's no big deal in just asking. At this point, I interrupt her and tell her that she should know better. We were together over two years and always shared my thought about everything with her. She agreed. At this point, I explained to her that I didn't break up with her for the question. I did it because there was already a guy. So for me, that was a major trust issue. If this was some concern that came out natural, maybe we could have worked it out. But in the worst scenario, maybe we could found an alternative. But the way things were, it was an alert for me. We went around the topic for a while and then I began to question her. Basically, I asked if she was intimate with him at some point. She said she wasn't. If she developed some feelings for him, no, she didn't. And lastly, if she has seen the guy again, and that was also a no. Even if that is not much, that was a small relief. But I explained to her that I can't go back to her. I need to close this for my own health. As I told her that we share a lot of friends and I don't want to lose any of them because of this and wouldn't be fair to ask them to choose. So we can behave like adults and keep things friendly. If my friends take one side, it's because they want it, not because I asked them to. She said how sorry she is that if she could, would undo everything, but she knew it can't be done. She was about to cry. I was also too. So it was a good moment to ask for the check and leave. I walked her to her car, opened the door for her, just a habit of mine, and she started to cry. I couldn't help but hug her. We stood there about 10 minutes. When she calmed, she got into her car and drove. I was in shock. Went home, grabbed my camping gear, and drove to the mountains and spent all weekend there to clear my mind. Early this morning, I was driving back to the city and at that very moment, my phone grabbed signal. It got flooded with messages from friends and family, all worried because I basically disappeared without telling anybody. I text back to everyone telling them that I was okay, that I went out for camping and at that moment was driving to work. Also, I got a text from her, something along the lines that she feels that we are not over yet and that she thinks I need more time to leave all this behind me 
and she will wait in the hope of it. I haven't texted her back because I'm pretty sure I'm done, but experience has taught me to never say never. So for now, I'm going to take it easy, doing what I like, and see where things take me. Well, that's it. Thanks for all your support and advice. P.S. Sorry about my English. No more reactions from the community. First up, good job standing up for yourself. The moment she got another guy in her mind, she's no longer respecting you. Do not take her back. There are plenty of good women out there that will treat you right. Well, now she can get all the attention and sexual experience with any guy she wants. While being single, of course. Only vile humans wish to explore their sexual desires while still in a relationship with others. The OP replies, To be fair, the mind played tricks on us, so having thought or fantasies is pretty normal. Take action is the issue. Here's where I draw the line. I don't wish her ill or anything. At the moment, I'm just a little sad. Not gonna lie. Going back had crossed my mind a lot of times, but I just play in my mind the scenario of me back with her and also wondering and having the need to check her phone. And that's a big no for me. I don't believe she is vile, only we weren't on the same page. Also, I think deep inside, she wasn't on the same page with her own self. Anyway, time to move forward and see what life has ahead for me. Honestly, I think you made the right choice. She decided to go for it and she found out what that cost her. You deserve someone who wouldn't entertain such a thought. Wishing you all the best, OP. What do you think? Did OP overreact? Next up, a girlfriend exploring herself by means of another man. Girlfriend, female 24, cheated on me, male 24, in a long distance relationship as she wanted to explore herself. So I started talking to this girl back in 2021. Got introduced to her because we worked in the same company. After a few weeks, I asked her out and began a relationship. We stayed in a long distance relationship as work from home was introduced. We spent a lot of time together as we were working together. Shared a great connection, had so many similar hobbies, interests, and kinks. After one year, she tells me that she plans to move abroad to pursue higher education, her master's, as she wasn't satisfied with her current salary and asked me to do the same since it'd be beneficial for our career growth and would give us an opportunity to build a life together at some place new. I agreed and we both applied for spring intake together. We got the admission. Her visa got approved, but mine didn't, so I had to apply for fall intake. Ultimately, it did get approved. So she left in December 2022 and and again, we continued the long distance relationship. After two months, she was crying like crazy and tells me that her roommate tries to kiss her forcefully while he was drunk and she rejected it. I told her to strictly establish boundaries so that these sorts of incidents don't happen again or just look for another place. In the next few weeks, when things seemed fine, she asked me for my thoughts on open relationships. I straight up told her no, I'm not interested in that and I'll never be interested in it. And she told me to just try and have a one night stand and see how it feels. I got somewhat alarmed and told her no means no, and she didn't bring it up again. The thing is that we were both virgins and we had planned about exploring the sex stuff together. So it did come as a shock as to why she's asking me to try these things when we have plans for that sort of stuff already. Then later on, everything made sense. So this month out of nowhere, she tells me that things got physical between her and her roommate, the one who tried to kiss her forcefully, while they were alone in the gym and later on ended up having sex. This continued for a few days. She told me that she just couldn't wait, and as she feels like she's getting old, she feels the need to explore herself. The sex didn't mean anything, and that she still wants to build a life with me and she loves me. I was furious. Here I am, leaving my job, family, family business, everything behind, spending a crap ton of money just so that we could be together, get married, and build something for us, and this is what she did to me. She says she feels very guilty about it, and she has ended everything with a roommate and is already looking for a new place where she will live by herself until I'm with her. Sorry for making this so lengthy. I'm just devastated. I don't know how to handle this. I haven't picked up her calls or replied to her texts. I feel so betrayed and have no motivation to move abroad. Everything feels like a waste and a mistake. Any suggestions on what I should do? Shall I forgive her and give her another chance? Or shall I continue ignoring her? Let's see what kind of advice is offered in this scenario. First up, the relationship is over. If you want to move abroad, do it for yourself, not her. This woman has cheated and lied to you, and she will do it again. Even if where you are moving will be right next to her, ignore her. Stop contact completely. Any money you are spending on her stops right now. She will continue to say I love you, beg and plead to you. Ignore it. None of it will help you when she destroys your trust again. Would you honestly still get married to her? Knowing that the second you are outside of her line of sight, she will sleep with another random dude and call it 
self-discovery? Disappear from her life and teach her the price of being disloyal to someone you care about. OP replies, Yeah, no contact has been the case for the past two weeks and I never spent any money on her. She's taking care of her finances by herself. In her last text, she said that she's going to wait for me and will reach out to me once I'm there. I just ignored it. In-laws trying to convince me to accept wife's infidelity. Need help. Hey there, I need to spell some things out and ask for advice because I'm really losing it. And before I start, yes, the title is as bizarre as it sounds. My wife, 28 female, and I, 30 male, have been happily married for three years. I thought we were perfectly fine and in love, but a few days ago, she dropped a bombshell on me. She confessed to having an affair, saying she still loves me, but wants us to be in an open relationship. I was shattered and asked her to leave so I could process this. Fast forward to this morning. I got a visit from her parents, my in-laws. I've always had a good relationship with them and hoped they would back me up and help convince my wife that this wasn't fair to our marriage. Boy, was I in for a surprise. Her dad, a man I've always respected, started the conversation. He confessed to me that their marriage had been saved by agreeing to the same terms my wife was suggesting. They had entered into an open relationship years ago, and he said it had actually made their bond stronger. He told me that he wanted the same for us and that accepting this would be a sign of love and maturity. I was dumbfounded, still trying to process this when her mother chimed in, and her words? They were just brutal. She outright told me that I wasn't satisfying her daughter's needs and that I was inadequate. She said I was being selfish and unloving by refusing to accept the new arrangement. Guys, I felt emasculated, betrayed, and confused. This isn't what I signed up for when I said, I do. I love my wife, but I can't just blindly accept infidelity. This isn't a lifestyle that I want, and it feels like an unfair and sudden burden that's been thrust on me. I feel like my world has been turned upside down, and I'm being asked to celebrate it as if it's some great epiphany. Please, Reddit, any advice would be much appreciated. How do I handle the situation? Do I agree to try this open relationship to save my marriage, or should I stick to my guns and risk the possibility of ending my marriage? Or is there any other way to resolve this issue? TLDR, wife cheated and wants open relationship. In-laws support her and even encourage me to accept it. Mother-in-law outright says I'm inadequate. I'm confused, hurt, and don't know what to do. Please, advice needed. Update. Hey Reddit. Brace yourselves for another unexpected twist. It involves my mother, and it's not pretty. Today, I got a surprise visit from my mother, accompanied by my mother-in-law. They walked in, and I could feel an ominous atmosphere settle. My mother, usually a jovial and loving woman, had a stern expression. Son, she began, her tone firm yet gentle, we've been discussing your situation. Yeah, I've noticed, I replied, crossing my arms. What's your take, Mom? She shared a glance with my mother-in-law, then sighed. I believe it might be best if you considered the arrangement your wife is suggesting. I was stunned. You're on their side? Why? Well, she paused. I've always been concerned that maybe you wouldn't be able to satisfy your wife due to your physical inadequacy. My mouth fell open. Here was my mother, the woman who raised me, echoing my mother-in-law's cruel words. I felt a rush of betrayal, sadness, and embarrassment. I asked them both to leave, needing some time alone. Feeling like my world was spinning, I called my father. We weren't the closest, but he'd always been straightforward and honest with me. I quickly explained the situation. Jesus, he grunted over the phone. Your mother said that? I can't believe it. Actually, I can. His words took me by surprise. What do you mean, Dad? I'm not shocked she's supporting this, your mother. She wasn't the most faithful wife for herself. It's a big part of why we got divorced when you moved out. The revelations didn't stop. I felt like I was in a terrible dream. We need to talk, son, he continued. Let's get together, meet with a lawyer, and figure out how to handle this. So, that's the next step. My dad and I are scheduled to meet with a lawyer. I'm scared, hurt, and utterly confused. I'll update you after we've met with the lawyer. As always, any advice is welcomed. Update 2. Hello again, Reddit. Your support through all of this has been genuinely invaluable, and I want to keep you updated. As I mentioned in my previous post, my father and I planned to meet with a lawyer to discuss the situation. We had the meeting today, and here's what went down. I won't lie, walking into the law office felt overwhelming, but having my father beside me was a comfort. We explained everything to the lawyer, from my wife's desire for an open marriage, to the insensitivity of my in-laws and even my own mother's hurtful words. The lawyer, a composed and stern woman, listened attentively. 
She explained that while the legal landscape around open marriages was complex, there were certain things I needed to be clear about. Firstly, she emphasized that my consent was critical. Regardless of what anyone else says, you have the right to decide what you are comfortable with in your relationship, she stated firmly. Secondly, she made it clear that if we decided to divorce, my wife's infidelity could impact the outcome, depending on her state laws. She also touched open asset division, alimony, and how any future infidelity could potentially affect these things. Finally, she suggested we consider couples therapy before making any drastic decisions. This was not a legal, but a personal suggestion. She explained that therapy could provide a safe and mediated space for my wife and me to express our feelings and thoughts, and perhaps help us find a resolution. However, I'm afraid it's far too late for couples therapy. I spoke with my wife an hour ago over the phone and her response was, well, exactly what you'd expect. Therapy won't change anything, she said coldly. I love you, but this is non-negotiable for me. You either accept it or it happens without your approval. I was dumbstruck. The woman I had loved and married was standing in front of me, giving me an ultimatum that shook me to my core. In that moment, I felt something in me snap. With a heavy heart, I asked her for a divorce. To that, she just smirked and said, I'm not signing any divorce papers. We said, for better or for worse, remember? I couldn't bear it any longer. I packed a bag and left our home, feeling more lost than I ever have in my life. I decided to move in temporarily with my father. The next twist in the saga? My mother showed up at my father's doorstep, berating him for supporting me and encouraging my stubbornness. She insisted that I should be more understanding and flexible in my marriage. That was the final straw. My patience and goodwill, already hanging by a thread, snapped completely. I confronted her and called her out for her hypocrisy and infidelity. You're nothing but a cheating whore, I spat out, the pent-up anger and betrayal pouring out. You have no right to preach about understanding and flexibility. She left in a huff, clearly shaken. I've never spoken to her like that before, but in that moment, it felt justified. So here I am, living with my dad, unsure of my next step. My wife is refusing to divorce, my mother is unsupportive, and my world has been turned upside down. But I'm not giving up. I'm going to fight for my dignity, for my rights, and for my peace of mind. I'll update you as things progress. In the meantime, any advice or words of encouragement would be much appreciated. Also, to the people saying my post is fake or some kind of creative writing project, thank you for your opinions, but I'm not that creative. If I was, I doubt my wife would be cheating on me. OP, I am sincerely sorry to hear about the challenging circumstances you are dealing with. Finding out your spouse has been unfaithful is heartbreaking, but it's even more upsetting when your own in-laws support an open relationship rather than helping you through this trying time. Although it's obvious that you still love your wife and are willing to work on your relationship, it is crucial to put your own interests and morals before those of your spouse. Your wife's confession and desire for an open relationship have every right to leave you feeling hurt, betrayed, and perplexed. When you exchanged vows, you did not agree to this. Your in-laws' involvement, especially their hurtful remarks, only intensifies the suffering and confusion. Nobody has a right to make you feel inferior or to belittle you. It's important to keep in mind that their viewpoint might be influenced by their own experiences, but that doesn't mean you have to agree with them or abandon your own principles. Getting professional assistance such as through a couple's therapy can be a helpful first step in gaining understanding and considering different options. Therapy helps you and your wife communicate by giving you a safe place to express your thoughts, worries, and desires. Nevertheless, I recognize that you've had enough and have decided to file for divorce. The complexity of your situation is further heightened by having to deal with your mother's actions and her own history of adultery. Setting boundaries and protecting your emotional well-being are crucial, especially when dealing with unsupported relatives. Although confronting her to express your feelings and correct the record may have been necessary, keep in mind that your needs should come first at all times. It's crucial to rely on the support of reliable friends, family, and even online communities like Reddit as you navigate through this challenging chapter in your life. Always keep in mind that you have the right to seek out happiness, respect, and satisfying relationships. Focus on re-establishing your life on your own terms while remaining steadfast. Now let's get some other community thoughts. Monkai says, how do you handle it? She cheated. You contact a lawyer first thing and do everything you can to get evidence, audio recordings discussing the affair if possible. If you're in an at fault state, this helps make sure you don't get taken to the cleaners if you're in the US. Open relationships post cheating and being forced on the other party always end in dragging out the inevitable destruction of the marriage. The relationship is done. I'm sorry, but it's done. She disrespected you in your marriage and has demonstrated that you don't mean nearly as much to her as she does to you. The person you have now is not your wife any longer. This is someone else. That person you fell in love with and married no longer exists. White Raccoon adds on, 
also OP. Her parents can go kick rocks. The last thing I would tolerate is third party people telling me what I should be feeling or setting the terms of what I want in a relationship. OP, just walk away. The level of toxicity is going to be too much with her parents justifying everything she has done. Don't bother with closure because you're not going to get it. But what you will get is a ridiculous amount of gaslighting. Cut all contact and start thinking about how you can heal. Two cents worth for you wants to say, and further to my garbled comment, your mother-in-law had the audacity to say her daughter's needs weren't being met because you're inadequate and to top it off, called you selfish and unloving. What about your needs, especially your need of monogamy? You might love her and respect the marriage vows, but she doesn't and neither do your in-laws. Irregular bastard weighs in on the conversation. Absolutely not. No self-respecting man stays with a cheating woman and gets pushed into an open relationship. Her dad was weak and his daughter is just like her mother. Don't be weak like him. If you stay with her, you're giving her permission to get plowed by as many guys as she wants, all while you stay at home, the dutiful, disposable, cuckold. Go to a divorce attorney and discuss your options. Lastly, Reverse Weasel wants to say this. Get rid of her, period. And why the F does your mother-in-law or mom know about your dick? This crap is crossing all kinds of boundaries. You need to understand some families exist where these boundaries being crossed wouldn't enter their brains, even for a second. If you need therapy, it would be with your mother. Your wife and her family will be a distant memory soon enough, but the fact your mom didn't stick up for you is baffling. Thank God you have your dad, man. I guarantee you've been dealing with BS like this your whole life. You seem like a good dude, but it has to end now. By the grace of the gods, take the time to control and show these a-holes who you really are. Someone who doesn't deal with morons. On to the next adventure. Am I the a-hole for choosing loyalty to my sister-in-law over my cheating brother? Me, female 17. Brother, male 29. Sister-in-law, female 29. My brother Jake, fake name, and sister-in-law Ashley, fake name, had been together since they were 15. They got married when they were 20 and have three kids together. Ashley and I have always been close. She's like the big sister I never had. My whole family loves and adores her, and her and Jake always seem to have the perfect relationship. A couple of weeks ago, Jake went on a trip with some friends for the weekend because it was one of their birthdays. Ashley didn't go and stayed home with the kids. However, during the trip, Jake only checked in with Ashley once, which was when he arrived at the destination, and never again after that. It was unusual because he's always on his phone and told Ashley and my family that he would check in. Ashley decided to call one of Jake's friends to see if something had happened. But when his friend answered, he told Ashley that there was no trip and he had no idea where my brother was. After that, we told Ashley to come and stay with us for the rest of the weekend as she was a bit distraught. My brother eventually came home on the Monday and said that he had lost his phone, which was absolute BS and we all knew it. Before he returned, we asked Ashley what she wanted to do with what she knew. She told us not to bring it up with Jake and not to jump to conclusions and that she will handle it. After my brother arrived, he and Ashley headed back to their house. A few days later, my brother messaged my mom to see if he could stay at ours for a bit, but he didn't say why. Not too long after, Ashley messaged us and told us that she confronted him about the trip and how she knew it didn't exist. He kept denying it and said that she was just being crazy and that he just lost his phone. He eventually confessed that he was at a coworker's house and that he had been hooking up with her for a few months. His excuse was that Ashley and him hardly had sex anymore, so he needed to find someone to fulfill his needs. Ashley ended up kicking him out and they decided to get a divorce. My brother ended up moving in with us until he finds a place of his own and until the divorce is finalized. I haven't spoken to him since he moved in and don't plan to. All I can do is look at him in disgust. I have so much hatred towards him after what he'd done to Ashley. My parents are disappointed in him, but still love him because he is their son. They told me to forgive him because he is my brother, but I just can't. I have started going to Ashley's every day after school to help with the kids and take some stress off of her. My brother found out about this and is mad at me for going over there. He told me to cut her off since they are not together anymore and says she is no longer a part of our family, so there's no need for me to go to see or speak to her. Just because you effed up your relationship with her doesn't mean I have to. I will always love her and I will not be cutting her off. I told him that I will choose her over you if it comes down to that. After that argument, he has not spoken to me or even looked at me. Every time he sees me, he walks the other way. My parents have told me to apologize and fix things with him, but I don't think that will ever happen. My other brothers have sided with him and all think I'm a piece of crap for choosing Ashley over my brother. Deep down, I still love my brother and don't want to lose him, but what he did is unforgivable to me. Let's get a couple community reactions. Leanna Van says, Your brother is a dick. 
the rest of your family are enabling his bad behavior. Maybe when Ashley takes away the grandkids, they might change their tune. You are being a decent human being. What do I do now, damn it? chimes in. Not the a-hole. She's been in your life since you were what? Three years old? I think she's just as much your sibling as he is at this point. Update. April 21 of 23. Firstly, I just wanted to answer a common question I keep getting. Is my brother still in contact with his kids? No, he is not. He has not seen or spoken to them since he was kicked out. His own choice. Okay, so I have not spoken to my brother since our argument. He refuses to talk to me as well as acknowledge me. My parents still insist that I apologize and make things right with him. I have told them I would try to make things right, but I will not be apologizing. However, my brother does not want to hear anything I say. I have spoken with my parents about everything and how I feel. It was pointless. They don't even try to understand my side of things. It's just all about my brother to them. Ashley and the kids are doing great. Her family have come down to support her and help out. I also still go over there whenever I can. My parents have not seen the kids or spoken to them either. Ashley has made it clear that they can visit anytime they like, but because my brother doesn't want us to have anything to do with her, they refuse to go over. Ashley plans to gain full custody of the kids to which my brother has agreed upon. This was the only time they have spoken to each other since they split up. Ashley is also planning to move closer to her parents, which I'm sad about, but also happy for her and the kids. They deserve to be happy and away from all this toxicity. I don't know if my brother and I will ever fix our relationship, but I honestly don't care anymore. I'm planning to go no contact with him once he leaves. There's not much more to say. My brother is still behaving like a child and my parents and brothers still stand beside him. I will update if anything changes. Thank you to everyone for the kind words and advice. This concluded as sister-in-law is divorcing and moving away with the kids and brother has agreed to give her full custody. Let's get a couple quick comments from the community. Pray for Mojo 2020 says, How? How are people okay with their children abandoning their own children? OP's parents are just as awful as her brother. I wish he could go live with Ashley and the kids. Less human than NPC has to say, OP's parents don't even want to see their grandchildren because OP's brother doesn't want to be in contact with them? I can smell who the golden child is. 23 male, 23 female, girlfriend wanted an open relationship, so I broke up with her. Now she wants to get back together. I, 23 male, was dating my ex, 23 female, up until a month ago. We were together for four years before that. So before we broke up, she was acting distant for a good month. Then, as of last month, sat me down and asked for an open relationship. The minute those words came out of her mouth, I broke up with her. I came into this relationship expecting a monogamous relationship, and now she wanted to change the relationship. I only want to be with one person. If we couldn't agree on that, saw no future. With the way she was acting before this, I can't trust her, and even if she wasn't acting shady, I wouldn't be able to trust her anyway for suggesting it. Those are some of the reasons I decided to break up with her in that moment, even though it might seem harsh. <laughs> in my opinion, if someone wants a relationship like that, the relationship should start like that for it to be healthy, not just dumped on your partner after years of monogamy. Now I've been getting texts and voicemails from her crying to take her back and that she didn't mean it. I'm not sure what to think. Some people have been telling me that I acted too rash and didn't even give us time to work it out and that it was cruel of me to do that. Is this something I acted too quick with or not? Ask for an opinion, the community will respond. Apples X and X Cinnamon says, Nope, you went with your instincts. They were correct. If she wants to sleep with other people, she can do it without you. I don't understand why she feels like she needs you. You gave her exactly what she wanted. Why isn't she happy? The OP replies, Exactly. She got what she wanted. A pass to sleep with other people. Just without the boyfriend. Trey Boucher says, Good for you. She probably had someone in mind. It didn't work out, and now she's crawling back. You know what you want in a relationship, and she's not it. The OP replies, Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if I found out that she cheated, either emotionally or physically, already, and was just trying to use it as an excuse. I can't trust a person who suddenly wants to turn a monogamous relationship into an open or poly one, especially with the way she was acting the month before this all happened. Yoan2000 chimes in, I think you did the right thing. I was in a similar situation, and I'm thankful that I stuck with the decision to break up with her. Any doubts you have currently will fade with time, you can't help but suspect that she suggested this because she already knew who she wanted to sleep with, given that she was distant for a month leading up to this. The only time, I think, an open relationship has a chance is if you are on good terms when it's suggested, not distant for a month leading up to it, and you are both on board from the get-go. Neither applies in your case. I don't think you acted at all rash, OP. If she wasn't already cheating on you, 
She definitely would have started had you stayed. I think it was fair to end things when you both entered into the relationship on the same page and with the same intentions, but suddenly boundaries are being crossed. When someone brings up something like an open relationship and that's not what you agreed upon at the beginning of the relationship, you shouldn't feel forced to stay just to make someone else happy. People grow apart. I think it's clear she had other intentions. I feel like if you don't enter a relationship talking about it being open right from the start, the idea of making it open as you go just means someone wants a guilt-free excuse to screw around on their partner. Update. I thought I would give an update since people DM me to post one when I can. I didn't expect to update this soon though. After posting and expressing to some people that I had a suspicion she cheated on me, I couldn't get the nagging feeling out of my head. I didn't want to know at first, but decided to go digging and ask mutual friends what X had been up to that month she was acting shady. I didn't expect one of her closest friends to spill the beans, but she did. My suspicions were correct. She had been cheating on me with a mutual friend's cousin. I decided to message the guy on Facebook. When I messaged him, he wanted to meet in person, so I met him at a local pub. When I got there, he apologized and explained everything, how he didn't know she was in a relationship, and that the day she called me wanting me back is the day he found out and broke it off. I can't fault the guy. He seemed genuine and really apologetic. On the plus side, I drank for free the entire time. He seems like a great guy, especially considering how he broke it off right away once he knew. But at least I have a bit of closure now. I blocked my ex on everything and I'm gathering her stuff she's left here to mail to her so she doesn't come knocking. It's taking a lot of power not to leave a note in the box along the lines of, Mark seems nice. Too bad you lost him too. The community always got some opinions too. Chili Vanilli 75 has one. You're lucky she showed her real self before marriage. Good luck, man. The man from Uncle 100 chimes in. Good job, OP. You trusted your instincts and you got rid of lying, cheating girlfriend. Prisoner of Azkaban says, I vote you screw Mark, to be honest. The OP replies, I totally would. Just not sure if the dude is straight or what. Shelly895 adds, You know what? Why not add the note? Let her know that you know she's a lying cheater. Ah, uh, yes. Your intuition was spot on. I'm sorry she did this to you, OP, but I'm glad you were smart enough to get the heck out of there. What do you think? Next up, there's no such thing as almost cheating, especially when dick pics are involved. Does almost cheating count? My 36 wife, 35, moved to a new state for a job transfer and lower cost of living. We both were excited and came up with goals of creating a new life, making new friends, and creating stability for our young children. The pandemic hit, and we got really close to our neighbors and hung out at each other's houses. One couple went through a divorce rather quickly. That couple lived next door. The neighbor's wife moved far away, but as the couples hung out at his house all the time. He was an excellent cook and had a pretty nice spread in the backyard. One night, me and this neighbor, we call him Jim, were smoking a cigar with one of his old military friends. They began exchanging stories of how they would sleep with married women on base. I got uncomfortable and made an excuse to leave. This raised my suspicion because Jim and my wife would text from time to time, usually making plans for us all to hang out. My wife would also ask questions about Jim's love life. Whether it was right or wrong, I began to snoop. Couldn't find anything on her phone or emails, so I stopped. Over a year later, my wife found religion and told me to stop hanging out with Jim because he didn't live a clean life. I agreed because she was right, Jim wasn't the best influence. My wife went on a trip with her high school friends which I was happy to pay for because our plans on making friends didn't really work out. During her trip, I found a diary entry in which she expressed her attraction to this guy, that she didn't care about a potential fail out of making her move on him. The entry was dated back to when we all started hanging out. Still, I confronted her about this because of all the signs. She said nothing happened. Then I found pictures of his dick on her phone and a text that wrote, my husband will be out of town next week. Will you be around? I confronted her again. She claimed it was over and that she wasn't going through with it. Mind you, I was going out of town for a close family member's funeral. I started recording her while I was away. She confesses that she didn't cheat, but she was going to. She apologized and tried to make up for it, about a week of effort. Then she went back to barely putting out and her normal moody behavior. Is it cheating if she didn't actually cheat and only didn't go through with it because I confronted her five to seven days before she has plans to? She told me to move on and that it was only virtual. She is cold every time I bring up the subject. I feel like it can move on, but not that fast. Does almost cheating count? Ask the opinion, the community responds. OK Breakfast 9531 says, yes, this is cheating, full stop. If you were sending dick pics to someone else and making plans to sleep with them, do you think she would consider that no harm, no foul? 
This was way over anyone's line. Potential ad 807 says, OP, sorry you're going through this. Break this down step by step. First, you're uncomfortable around this guy about what he said. I think he stated that to let you know it happened and was rubbing it in your face. Red flag. Second, you found her diary after she told you she found religion, but it was dated back from the beginning. Second red flag. Third, you found text messages with his dick pic and also when they were going to meet up. Third red flag. Fourth, now you have a dead bedroom, basically, and she is moody. Fourth red flag. I have a feeling that she is not telling you the truth and it already happened multiple times and you finally caught her. You might want to contact his ex-wife and find out why they got divorced and also let everyone, husbands, that goes to his house know what you found out. He might be doing the same thing to their wives. Please keep us updated. Next thought from Permian Cloud. This doesn't sound like almost cheating. Chris lives in Alaska says, agreed, she didn't get caught, trickle truth in progress. Membership Impossible thinks, OP, I hate to say it, she cheated. The reason she did not want you hanging out with Jim anymore because she was fearful he would slip and let her secret out. If I was in your shoes, she would be taking a poly, Jim would be explaining the dick pics on her phone, and she would stop the neglect that you are getting from her. If she cannot do this, then you really need to consider if this is a relationship you want to continue to be a part of. So, yes, she did cheat on you. Dick pics aren't almost cheating. That's definitely cheating. Don't be in denial. Bring it up to her. And just think how fast she moved on from you once she saw Jim. That's moving fast. You're not moving fast at all. By leaving her, you're making space for good things in your life and people who aren't willing to hurt you. Be real with yourself here, OP. What should OP's next steps be? Meanwhile, next, if protecting your inner peace means breaking the lease, break the lease. Girlfriend of two and a half years cheated on me and we are stuck living together. My girlfriend, 24 female, cheated on me, 24 male, about three weeks ago. She didn't even have the courage to just break things off with me before she committed the act. I knew something was off and did a bit of snooping, which eventually led me to catching her in the act. If I could, I would have went straight home and packed all my things, left, and never looked back. The predicament is that we are stuck on a lease together and can't afford breaking the lease at this current moment. We both moved to a new city with no friends and family as well, so I'm kind of screwed on that sense. Although she did me dirty, for some reason I still love her deeply and would like to work things out. On her end, she doesn't want to and is still seeing this man she cheated on me with, which I recently found out as a co-worker. I cannot heal while I know she is still seeing this man and she has no respect to at least keep their relationship confidential. It breaks my heart over and over again when she spends the night at his house and doesn't return for two days at a time. I'm an overthinker and while she isn't home, I'm just constantly thinking of negative things. Our lease ends in a couple of months and I really want to heal, but it is impossible right now. The community should have some words of wisdom. New Arrival 9860 says, The reason you still love her dearly could be that you love the person you thought she was, and you love the memories of what you thought you had, and what you imagined the future would be. Replace those thoughts with what you know now about her character, her ability to deceive you, and her ability to treat you with no regard and no respect. This is the real person. The one you have love for does not exist. Ad Adventurous 5657 says, Pack her crap and drop it to his house, and out her on social media. Mehibitable888 says, I like this too, but I prefer the idea of bringing over a bunch of hookups. <laughs> that would really burn her butt. The reality is, it's impossible, ever. Please don't consider ever going back to her. Not only does she not want to be with you, which she's made perfectly clear, why the hell would you want to be with someone who can just treat you so carelessly? Find someone to take over your lease and move the hell out of there. There's no way you can recover or heal from this while you're sharing the same space. That's so toxic. You need to advocate for yourself right now. You love the person you thought she was, but she's very evidently not that person. Let her go. Convince OP to leave in the comments below. There's nothing left for him here. Lastly, the epiphany we all need. Finally ghosting him forever. I've been waiting for that final straw incident in my toxic freaking relationship for so long now, where I feel nothing for that switch in my head to shut off. It finally did. After another fight last night, I realized how much I missed my life before he was in it. I miss having fun without this draining, dark relationship cloud looming over me every day. This time I've stopped replying for good, and of course he has no idea. 
I've gone back a hundred times, but 101 was the lucky number, I guess. I'm grossed out by his presence. He's been texting since this morning about how he wants us to stop hurting each other. Ha! <laughs> me yelling about his cheating is hurting him. He says he will wait for me to cool off. Wait forever. I'm out this time, mother effer. The community has some words of support. Throw RA I'm too old says, Congrats. Strict no contact can be hard. Keep to it. The stricter the better. And when you're feeling it, refocus your attention to rebuilding. Yourself, your life, your connections to others. Miserable Duck 5574 says, I feel like I'm so effing close to this. I'm going maybe today is the day for me as well. The OP replies, I'm rooting for you. Feels good to be free. Why did we leave that lie? Responds, here to a beautiful life filled with happiness and self-love. I'm rooting for you. Yes, excellent. Sometimes all we need is that epiphany to really give us the kick in the pants that we need. I mean, 101 times is a bit much and you should have left after numero uno, but at least it's happening now. For him to say that you're yelling about his cheating hurting him is disgusting. He's totally delusional. Please don't go back. Cool off somewhere else and stay there. You deserve so much good that this world has to offer. This guy has nothing but pain and trouble. Would I be the a-hole for leaving the relationship without fighting for it after a girlfriend suggested open relationship? I'm going to keep it really short without details. I, 27 male, had been together with my girlfriend, 27 female, for three years. Stable relationship and no red flags from my point of view. Last Saturday, she asked for an open relationship. Her reasoning was we did not get to enjoy ourselves in the past and it could help us strengthen the intimacy and love. I rejected it and she seemed unhappy after that. I'm not gonna lie, an open relationship suggestion out of nowhere is a huge red flag for me and means probably there is someone else she has in mind already. I have been cheated on in the past and made it very clear that I want a monogamous relationship before being exclusive. Her suggestion made me mental for a few days. I wanna break up with her. I do love her, but she opened Pandora's box and I am not sure if I can trust her in that relationship. It will not be healthy for both sides. Would I be the a-hole if I leave the relationship without trying to salvage it? I tried saving my old relationship when there were trust issues and it did not work. I just do not want to harm my psychology struggling. At the same time, I doubt myself because I love her and it's a three-year-old relationship. Here's a question that was asked in the comments. Has she been complaining about the lack of intimacy? No. I asked if it's related to that, but she said no. It's not about quality either. We both live with our families and still have three to four times intimacy a week after meeting up. There is no consensus bot on am I the a-hole, but top comments were not the a-hole. Update post, February 15th, 2024, two days later. I made a post two days ago about my relationship situation on the subreddit. I want to thank everyone. I took my time reading most of these comments and there were some really useful advices. Here's the original post. I talked to her yesterday and broke up with her. I told her I thought about her proposal and wanted to ask her a question. I basically asked why she proposed going open relationship out of nowhere. She said she heard it from friends of hers and would like to try it to strengthen our relationship. I asked her if she had some one in mind already. She said no. I thanked her for her answers, but I stated I wanted a strictly monogamous relationship. Also. I told her how my trust for the relationship was shaken after her proposal and I want to break up with her. Wished her the best and prepared to leave the table. She got angry, a bit too angry at me. She called me insecure and called me every name possible in the book. I left the table quickly after hearing these and went back home. She started calling me, texting me in an angry tone and I just had to block her. We both live with our families so breakup was quickly done. No need to take my belongings from the shared home or anything. There is no problem until here. Today, a friend told me she saw her with a male coworker the same night and asked me if I knew it. I told her we broke up yesterday, so yes, she definitely had someone in mind. It does not hurt as much as I thought it would. Maybe it's because I was ready for such a thing. Maybe my mentality changed after the last time I got cheated on. My mindset is all about moving on and not worrying about things I cannot control anymore. Had she been cheating during the relationship or not, I do not care to know. All I can do now is to move on and live my best life. I have a trip to South Korea this month and I want to enjoy it. Thanks for all the advices, Reddit. Take care. Looks like someone left Pandora's box open and now all the demons are out to play. I mean, proposing an open relationship out of the blue? 
That's like suggesting a vegan diet to a lion. It's just not going to fly. And then getting angry when the other person decides they're not up for it? Talk about adding insult or injury. But hey, at least now you can see clearly through the fog of love. She wanted to open a relationship. You wanted to close the door on her. Sounds like a classic case of irreconcilable differences. And let's not forget the share on top, catching her red-handed with a coworker on the rebound. But you know what they say, once bitten, twice shy. You've been through this rodeo before, and now you're ready to ride off into the sunset, solo style. What would you have done? Next up, a friend turned foe. My best friend and I have been training partners in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for over a decade. We're both high level practitioners. He's a black belt and also one of our school's coaches. I'm just a brown belt who trains several times a week. My buddy, let's call him Chance, has been coaching beginners classes for the last two years. Chance is in his early 50s, me in my early 40s. So last year, a young couple decides they want to try Jiu Jitsu and they have to go through Chance's basics class and they instantly fall in love with it. Yana, 26 female, and Tanner, 28 male, are there for the basics class three to four times a week, and they've even decided to start taking private lessons from Chance on the weekends. Within three months, Yana and Tanner split, but are still showing up to the classes and taking privates, just separately now. Come to find out, Yana started throwing the F me eyes at Chance at every opportunity, and Chance, being the man whore he is, couldn't resist. Needless to say, that was kept very hush-hush over the last few months. About a week ago, Chance tells me that he had to call the cops on Yana because he was trying to distance himself from her and that she had subsequently broken into his house and started breaking crap. So naturally, he calls the cops to have the instance documented but decides not to press charges. Meanwhile, I'm over here with my bag of popcorn just watching this dumpster fire take place. Yana tells Tanner the truth about Chance and how she was cheating on him with Chance for a couple of months before the breakup. Yana is getting crazy jealous, starts stalking Chance and among other things. I'm totally here for it. Being happily married, I don't get to indulge in this kind of BS very often, and not at arm's length like this. I get home after Chance tells me about having to call the cops on Yana and just had to tell my wife. As I get into the details, I notice that she gets the somber look on her face. Normally, she's all about these drama stories that I bring home from work or from jujitsu, but this was different. I didn't get halfway through my story before she cuts me off, says she has a headache, and goes to lie down. At first I didn't think anything of it, but this was so out of the blue for her. She loves hearing gossip. I go to check on her in our room and after I get out of the shower, she's crying. That's when the red flags start flying out like streamers. So to prevent a long story from being any longer, Chance was also effing my wife. My wife was falling in love with him and for some reason, Chance shows up to Jiu Jitsu class with a black eye and in an Uber because oddly, all four tires on his truck got flat at the same time. Ah, Chance, the black belt Casanova, spreading his charm like he spreads his legs for anyone with a pulse. And then there's Yana, the starry eyed student who's more interested in getting a piece of Chance than mastering the armbar. Classic. Turns out Chance isn't just rolling on the mats, he's rolling in the hay with your wife too. Talk about a double leg takedown straight to the heart. Here's to you, OP, the unwitting referee in this cage match of emotions. May your punches be as sharp as your wit, and may your jujitsu moves be as slick as your friend's excuse for why he's always late to practice. Do you have a similar story? Share it with us in the comments below. Lastly, a divorce that never truly severed the ties that bind. Wife turned side chick. I hope this is the correct space for my experience. However, I'm filled with so much hurt and pain, it seems the best place for what I'm dealing with right now. I am a 36 female, and I made the decision two years ago to divorce my ex-husband just due to inconsistencies in our marriage when it came to progressing our lives forward financially. He quite frankly never wanted more for us. He'd quit jobs all the time and leave all the bills to me at any given point in the marriage. Of course there's more things but that was a main concern of mine. At that point none of the things ever included infidelity. Throughout our 10 year marriage and 13 years knowing one another, our chemistry had just never dwindled. Both very much in love, I'd say still up until the last month or so I thought. So we decided to stay close friends or in a situationship, I hear that term used loosely. Basically, it's almost as if the marriage never ended and we just don't officially live together, although we've tried again countless times over the years. Which brings me to two weeks ago. He was here after a recent job loss. I told him yet again he was more than welcome to stay here with me. I could feel he was worried about losing his job this time more than he was in the past because I wasn't that security net anymore. 
you know, the wife to pick up all the pieces. This day, I walked over to console him, a simple hug and a peck on the cheek before I left for work. While he was sitting at my computer desk, I leaned in for the kiss. His phone rings, on silent, an unfamiliar woman's name popped up, and he quickly grabs my face with both his hands and plants a big kiss on my lips instead. He tells me, I love you so much. As my eyes are diverted down from the screen of his phone, he uses his arms to try to conceal what I am seeing, but it's too late. In that moment, my heart stops, before it drops out of my chest into my gut. I'm panicked, but I try to calmly leave the room. I didn't want him to see the emotions on my face, so I play his game. I say, wow, thanks for the kiss, and I walk into the bathroom with the lights off, heartbroken because this isn't the first time she's called. I immediately remember, I saw him hurry to flip the phone over when I walked into my bedroom the previous week when it rang on silent, but this time I had proof because I saw her name. I finally go on to work and I cried my heart out. He randomly texts me, are you okay? So now he's trying to gauge my temperament so he can plan his next moves, I assume. Hours later, after I'd calmed down, I texted him to just leave my key at my place and leave and not return. He called me over 30 times before I answered. I told him I wasn't stupid and let's not pretend like I am. We aren't even officially anything, so just go be with her and leave me and my son alone. Then it hit me. He's been talking to her at my place. Well, my son has been in the next room and I've been at work. Wow. Like, things begin to start adding up for me. Like him starting random arguments with me in the mornings and petty fights around noon, just to take off without any explanation. Then come back late that evening apologetic, when he didn't ever have to come back to my place at all. Was he going to be with her? His sudden interest in pay-per-view fights that in a 10-year marriage I've never heard him speak about liking. He'd leave at 7 p.m., 8 p.m., 9 p.m., come back to my place at 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. from watching it? Was he going to be with her also? When he's not at my place, his inability to text consistently, or him at my place behind my back texting in bed late at night, was he with her or texting with her? Ever since I asked him to leave, I just cannot deal with his pain. How long had he been lying to me? Seeing this other person, or people, lying to us all? In retrospect, I guess he doesn't owe me any explanation because we are divorced. However, we don't act like we are. We still move and behave as a unit. He just fixed my car three weeks ago, helps me with the bills, took me to my doctor's appointments regularly, in the actual appointment room with me, asking my doctor's questions, picking up my medication from the pharmacy, speaks on us one day still having a child between the two of us. How could someone who I was married to want me to now play the side chick role? I feel devastated. I've never been cheated on prior to this, to my knowledge, but this sure feels like exactly how it would feel like if I did. I only asked for transparency from him. He could have told me he was seeing other people and that would have been perfectly fine by me, because then it would have allowed me to, one, not let him occupy my time and my space with me and my son, teen, two, allowed for me not to be too attracted to him, and not turn down guys that I passed up on post-divorce, and three, continually hope for another chance at our future rather than being a relationship or marriage again down the line, especially with his talks on wanting to have a child with me, which I would always dismiss. I haven't slept since I found out. I barely can work. What is food? I don't know the word hate because I'm such a loving person, and I mean I love hard. So why me? I apologize for the book, but now here I stand. My family and friends told me not to blame myself, but I do. They said, I'm diminishing the situation because there was no official title anymore between us. However, they told me, it doesn't matter. A romantic relationship to our capacity was a relationship, title or not. And to betray my trust and possibly my sexual health as well is very much cheating. The lies, deceit, betrayal, and leading me on to believe we were something that we weren't to his benefit is for a lack of better words, cheating. Reading stories here of others makes me recognize that I am not alone. God, I wish I could just take a temporary amnesia vitamin or something to be able to forget he ever existed. Thanks for reading. Now I have an opinion from the community. Why get divorced if you are going to continue pretending to be a married couple? This is an unhealthy and dishonest way to live. Just deal with him concerning co-parenting and grab a title for yourself. DOP replies, I waited all day to come back to see if there was any responses to the heartache I'm currently experiencing right now because I knew Reddit could be harsh and even cruel sometimes in a you need a reality check blunt, no filter style way. I also didn't expect my sympathy 
under a thread titled Surviving Infidelity either. Since now I'm the one on the stand for questioning, the answer is simple. Just love. No pretending. I just loved him. And we were hoping to possibly reconcile our relationship or marriage along the way. And I did not recognize that was unhealthy or dishonest. But you're absolutely correct. He's clearly moved on with someone new, probably beautiful and amazing now. So I'll go grab me a life of my own as well like you stated. Thanks for reading and I appreciate your response. We've got ourselves a case of divorce but not really. First off, let's give a round of applause to your ex-husband for his Oscar-worthy performance in the role of I'm totally committed to you, but also totally committed to someone else. Bravo, buddy. Bravo. And let's not forget about your stellar performance in the role of I'll just ignore all the red flags and keep on loving you. Hey, we've all been there, right? Nothing like a good old-fashioned case of denial to keep the heartbreak at bay. But fear not, dear OP, for you are not alone in this cesspool of betrayal and broken promises. You've got Reddit at your side, ready to offer a reality check wrapped in a blunt, no-filter package. Because sometimes, tough love is the only kind of love that can break through the fog of denial and get you back on track. What do you think of this? And thank you for joining us today on Our Space. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell before you leave. Don't miss out on our next video. Until next time.